A record setting 18 different comic titles were on the stands with the cover date of June 1937. This was the highest ever in the modern comic book world, the highest it would reach during 1937. Picture Crimes number one, published by David McKay Publications. This is a rare book, similar in design and content to Detective Comics number one. Gerber lists it as a seven or scarce. It's not even listed in the Overstreet Price Guide. All the stories are the crime genre. The cover art is by Edgar Franklin. This crime comic was Edgar Franklin Whitmack, born 1894, lived until 1956, an illustrator and cover artist for many of the most popular magazines of the 1920s and 30s. His covers were usually created as oil paintings. Where Rockwell specialized in the humorous aspects of small town life, Whitmack dealt mainly with male-oriented interests. He often painted heroic or action-type figures for the Saturday Evening Post, Outdoor Life, or for pulp magazines such as Adventure or Short Stories. He wrote and drew two series for Ace Comics in 1941 and 42, covering the early events of World War II at sea, Battle of the Atlantic and Battle for the Seven Seas. Feature Books number 2 had a focus on Popeye, published by David McKay with a cover date of June 1937, one of the nicest Popeye covers in comics featuring Popeye and Sweet Pea, reprinting strips by E.C. Cigar in a 52-page issue. The historic title was the first U.S. comic book to devote complete issues to different characters. This was the first time this was attempted in the modern comic book market. And the first 25 issues were oversized with black and white interiors. The Popeye story ran 68 pages from writer-artist E.C. Cigar. The adventure humor story featured Popeye and olive oil. The newspaper daily strips modified for comic book for at reprinted strips from November 1935 through January 1936. Lulu Magazine number two from Sun Publications, published in Chicago, Illinois, was 52 pages, 25 cent cover price. Black and white interior from editor Don Ulsh. The humor magazine was filled with body one panel gags and jokes containing adult content. The series would run 21 issues in total up until 1941. Ace Comics number three was published by David McKay Publications, cover dated June 1937. This was the third comic book appearances of Jungle Jim by Alex Raymond, Blondie by Chick Young, also Crazy Cat, and all three characters appear in all 151 issues of this series. Ace Comics was a comic book series published by David McKay from 1937 to 1949, containing newspaper strip reprints. Appearances also by Tex Thorne, Tilly the Toiler, Etta Cat, Blondie, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and many more. Sea and Stars ran in the first 50 issues, featuring Hollywood movie stars. Tim Tyler's Luck ran in every issue, and the Curly Harper strip also ran up until issue 100. Blondie strip appeared in every issue of Ace Comics, as did the classic humor strip The Cats and Jammer Kids by Rudolph Dirks. Detective Comics number 4 from DC had a cover date of June 1937. Gerber calls it very rare with a rating of 8. It's an early issue of the longest running title in comic book history, which would lead to the creation of DC Comics. The cover art is by Craig Flessel, who also gave us the six page Speed Saunders story, which he wrote and drew under the alias Fless. Siegel and Schuster teamed up for Spy, a four page adventure detective mystery, as well as the 12 page Slam Bradley strip a detective mystery featuring that character and the new villain, Terrell Desmond. Star Comics number four was published by Harry A. Chesler, cover dated June 1937, rated an eight or rare by the Gerber's photo journal guide to comic books. It's the first modern comics cover of Little Nemo. And the cover of Little Nemo in Slumberland was drawn by Bob McKay under the alias Windsor McKay Jr. And Windsor McKay Jr. is the son of the creator of Little Nemo in Slumberland. You can tell it's not his father's work because the female characters are not drawn the same. Windsor McKay Jr. is also known as Bob McKay, but his real name is Robert Windsor McKay. Inside this issue there is a one-page impy story from Robert McKay, who was born June 21st, 1896, living until April 21st, 1962, an American cartoonist during the golden age of comic books. He worked professionally under the names Windsor McKay Jr. and Bob McKay, the son of cartoonist and animator Windsor McKay. 
1935, McKay signed with King Feature Syndicate to produce Nemo in Adventureland, which featured the characters of his father's work, Little Nemo, as adults and ran until 1936. He also made political cartoons for the syndicate during the 30s. In 1937, Harry A. Chesler created a newspaper syndicate signing McKay to produce a new version of Little Nemo as well as a daily featuring Impey. Production continued on both after the syndicate was closed in 1938, being utilized in various comic books including Coco Malt Comics and Blue Ribbon published by MLJ Publications. Street and Smith ran Little Nemo in 1942 in Shadow Comics. In 1945, McKay was again with Chesler Shop, producing Little Nemo for Red Seal and Punch Comics until 1947 when the shop closed down for the final time. Around 1939, McKay also began working for DC Comics as a colorist and would continue until about 1945. This issue also features some other highlights including Voice of the People, a one-page story from Fred Gardiner. I'm a Sphinx, a one-page story from Fred Gardiner. Fred Gardiner also gave us the science fiction story Dan Hastings, running six pages, written by Ken Fitch. And the team of Fitch and Gardiner also gave us a four-page Dan Hastings story. Fred Gardiner may also be the artist on When Mother Was a Girl and When Father Was a Boy, two short stories in this issue. Star Ranger number four from Harry A. Chesler with a cover date of June 1937 has a Billy Wright pedigree copy in existence. The cover art is by Dick Ryan, and some of the highlights include Tala, a four-page story from writer Norman Daniels and artist Fred Gardiner. The Last Hand is a three-page story from writer Charles Allen with art by Fred Gardiner. Fred Gardiner also gave us The Gay Desperado, Lion Lou, and Prairie Dog, three different short stories. Western Picture Stories number 4 was published by Comics Magazine, cover dated June 1937. This is the final issue of the short-lived Western theme title, the hardest to find of the four issues. Gerber lists it as an 8, meaning only up to 20 copies are believed to exist. There is also a mile-high pedigree copy from the collection of Edgar Church. Buck Bush is a one-page story from artist Joseph Barash. Famous Frontiersman is a two-page story from writer-artist Ray Burley and features the character Wyatt Earp. Funny Picture Stories number 7 from Comics Magazine, cover dated June 1937. This is the final issue of the short-lived title. Some of the highlights include Professor Josh Wink from artist Eugene Koskick and Tom Dawson, a seven-page story from writer-artist Steve Jessen. Steve Jessen worked for Centaur Comic Books through Funny Zinc into the late 40s. He did script and art on features like Christopher Coffin, Jerry Frost, Sea Scout, Tom Dawson, and Zardy Eternal Man. The Funnies number 9 was published by Dell Comics, cover dated June 1937. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this comic from the Edgar Church Collection. Some of the highlights include Dan Dunn, a four-page story from writer-artist Norman Marsh, G-Man on the Job is a two-page story from writer Dick Blair with pencils by Milt Youngren. Tailspin Tommy returned in a three-page story from writer-artist Hal Forrest. Sheldon Mayer gave us his teen book Scribbly in a two-page story. Bob Moore teamed up with artist Carl Fufer for Don Dixon and the Hidden Empire and also on the one-page story Tad of the Tanbark. 